Hi, hello. Uh, good morning on Monday. Let's wait a few seconds. Let's see if anyone is joining. I'm gonna grab my coffee. Um, no one is joining yet. Oh, 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 let's wait, let's wait. Oh, the sun is shining. And I'm a little bit um, white here. <laughs> Um, just a second. Okay. So now it's much better. Um, okay. I see that uh, no one is joining yet. But uh, let's briefly start. Um, I will start introducing myself, as always, for those who are here for the first time. My name is Victoria Florek. I'm an abstract painter, um, an artist, creative entrepreneur. I'm a mom to a 13-month um, girl, Vega, and a wife. I live in uh, Sabade, which is close to Barcelona in Spain. And uh, in the studio talks, I'm showing and sharing um, behind the scenes of my creative uh, business. Uh, and today we will talk about planning and setting the goals. I will have a little bit of coffee. Oh, no one is joining. That's really strange. Like last week there were um, 17 people, which is uh, a big amount. But today, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. It's really strange to talk to you uh, live if there is no one there. Um, I will have to try. <laughs> um, so this uh, studio talks, you will be able to watch it for 24 hours on Instagram as always, as any um, live ever. Um, but I will also post it on the blog so you can actually watch it anytime. Mm, and let's start with the goal setting. I will start, um, oh my God, I feel so strange. Really. So how I, um, how I set my goals. Um, last week I talked about uh, analyzing uh, previous year goals and that's actually um, where I start. So first I analyze, um, oh, hello, someone is joined. Twój Renifer. Hi, Twój Renifer, nice to see you. Um, so uh, going back to the goal setting, um, in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, week, in the previous uh, studio talks, uh, we talked about analyzing the goals uh, that we set last year and how the process looked like. Uh, I hope you watched it. If not, go uh, back after this one and watch it and have a look at your full year and really um, make this analysis uh, deeply and from the perspective of an external consultant. Um, that's uh, really important to have that objective point of view and not being too hard and too harsh on yourself. Um, so after we've analyzed um, our previous year, um, or after I analyzed my previous year, what I do, I start again my planning and I start uh, with a vision, a vision of uh, you know, a vision is something that is um, that can be very big and very general and I usually have a couple of visions because um, I have a couple of roles um, in my life and for each of those roles I have different visions. Like I have a vision of me being a mom, I have a vision of me being a wife, I have a vision of me being an artist. I have a vision of me being an entrepreneur because those are like for me four totally different visions, uh, totally different roles, and you know although some of the vi those visions can um, uh, can be complementary, uh, they are different and um, sometimes they may be even um, um, 
how to say it in English. They can even compete with each other because my vision of being a mom uh, often competes with my vision of being an artist uh, and of being an entrepreneur. Uh, so how do I uh, create that vision? Uh, maybe I will give you an example of um, myself and an artist as an artist. So uh, what is my vision as an artist? Um, to come up with that, this is also a process and this vision kind of gets more uh, clarity and it's much more defined year after year because uh, I learn all the time throughout the process and I learn what I like better, what I don't like that much. So that's why this vision changes a, little, uh, a lot. But at the beginning, it's really uh, brainstorming. I close my eyes and I think like, what does it mean for me to be an artist and how I want to feel as being an artist, um, as, as an artist, like what exactly do I want to feel uh, and who exactly do I want to, to be? And I know, for example, that for me being an artist is to uh, means freedom, it means uh, being independent, uh, it means to create freely, to create whatever comes to uh, my heart, it's to express myself, um, it's to uh, create, being creative uh, is to being inspiring and to uh, inspire with my art, to, um, to convey joy, to create out of joy because that's how I want to feel and that's how I want to create and that's how I want to, um, uh, that's what I want my art to reflect. Um, I basically want to feel that happiness and that the creative flow and, uh, and happiness. Uh, then I, envision myself like what I want to have as an artist and for me for example uh, the key or what I desire what I want to have is a huge big studio uh, with a lot of space uh, with a lot of light uh, right now I have a pretty small room uh, so I'm actually fortunate to have a separate space and to have a room uh, because when I started up I was uh, painting in my living room which wasn't that comfortable and some of my furniture uh, suffered from that. Uh, but anyway, my vision is, um, is that, uh, basically. That's how I envision myself as an artist. And now, how do I define um, my goal out of it? Because always the goal uh, goes connected to the vision. So my goal uh, to actually meet that vision is to... Um, it's very general goal again, but then I will, I will specify uh, later on. But my goal is to have a couple of personal projects um, this year. Uh, and when I mean personal projects, those are projects that are just done out of my desire to create. This is not something I know will sell. This is not something I will make to make money. If uh, by chance I make money with that, then that's totally fine, but that's not the purpose of that. The purpose of that those projects is to really fulfill my creative desire and to fulfill my creative, um, uh, I don't know, um, need and fire to express. Mm, and also my creative curiosity, because some of my projects are just to, um, uh, to explore and they might not be uh, good enough, e good enough even to show to someone, uh, but are very important and key uh, for my creative practice and for my vision of the artist that I want to be. Uh, so once I set this goal, like creative, uh, uh, to, to make my personal projects, um, the next step is to do um, brainstorming. And I just take, um, blank paper and I brainstorm like what creative projects would uh, fulfill my creative desires uh, for this moment and I write everything that comes up to my mind like um, 
I, for example, wrote that I want to paint huge paintings, like very large scale paintings. Mm, I really want to um, work or explore hand lettering and become better and better on, in that. And uh, my third um, mm, personal project that I want to work on this year is uh, surface design. I would, mm, I, I really dream about having my art and my creations on products. Uh, that's something that truly fascinates me and that's something that I want to use myself. Even if no one buys it, I would like, I would love to have um, a notebook with my painting or with my art. I would love to have uh, like basically <laughs> Everything I can possibly have, I would like. I would love to have it with my art on it. I want to have my own um, mugs, my own um, uh, dishes and plates. So I want to make ceramics, and I want to make all that. Um, and I already in the previous years uh, experimented a little bit with that. I did hand painted um, mugs, hand painted plates. I did. Uh, hand painted um, t-shirts and all that and this is part of my exploration but this year I want to take it to another level and what I want to do is to create a digital art that then I can print on things um, which will allow me also to see it from a different perspective and see how I like it and how that works for me um and if this is something i want to go further into that so that's my third project to um actually um, explore uh that surface design so we have this goal uh create personal uh projects and out of this goal i identified those three uh, important and big projects. And each of those projects is actually pretty huge. Uh, so the next phase uh, is to take one project and do again another brainstorming to identify different phases of that project. So for example, if I take my project, which is uh, paint huge um, paintings, my phases would be um, first to do um, to create a little bit of a concept like what exactly I want to paint, what would be my inspiration, what would be my uh, color, uh, what will be my color scheme, um, what uh, what sizes exactly I want to paint. Uh, and so on. So first it's like a little bit of a concept, conceptual phase. Then the second phase is to purchase all the um, materials. And for example, in my case, if I want to purchase large scale paintings, uh, large scale canvases, I really need to take care of all the logistics. It's not that uh, simple that I just buy it and bring it home because it basically, I want to paint um, paintings of the size that won't fit into my car. So, and I already know that here in Spain, I cannot um, order them to have them delivered to my home because none of the art shops um, with the art supplies um, does that. So I will need to um, do many different things so that I can have that. So this would be another phase. Then the other phase is the phase of the creation and exploration. And then another phase uh, probably um, I will uh, want to exhibit it somewhere because I want to create a, um, um, a current body of work that I will be able to exhibit later. Uh, so then there will be another phase um, uh, organizing an exhibition and there are different steps for that. Um, so that would be how I kind of um, divide that project. And now let's take one of the phases of that, um, of that project um, and see the exact steps that um, are actually actionable steps. So the steps you can do um, starting from tomorrow. And I usually try to um, divide it into such a small step that I can do it in uh, five, 15 minutes. 
Um, why? Because I have a small baby. Uh, well, it, it's actually not that small <laughs> anymore. She's 30 months, but still, uh, it, and it, she's not a baby anymore. Okay, a, to uh, a young toddler. Uh, and uh, often I have only 15 minutes um, of un uninterrupted moment where I can actually do something. And if I don't have uh, a task that is uh, possible to do in 15 minutes, then it's probably t that big that uh, that if I only have 15 minutes, I will say, oh no, I won't be able to do it in 15 minutes. So it doesn't make any sense even to start. Um, I have also some tasks that are longer, like two hours or, well, I, I try to make them maximum two hours, um, but I very rarely have such a long um, task. I like to have them short, like 15 minutes, half an hour, because after that, I really like to, um, uh, to have a little break and then uh, follow with another task. Hello, beautiful, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing very well. Hope you're doing well as well. <laughs> um, all right. So how do I, um, how do I, I lost my thought. So we had these phases and now I will show you exactly how I uh, come from there to, um, to this actionable task. So I take another piece of paper and I do brainstorming again. So if I take um, an example of the painting, okay, I want to create a large scale paintings. So I write everything I need to do um, in order to, um, um, to have that done, okay? Uh, so um, there would be things like we already mentioned, like um, decide on the sizes, uh, see where I can buy um, that size of a canvas, see, decide if I want to uh, paint it uh, stretched or unstretched. If I paint it stretched, then how am I going to deliver it to my house? I probably will need to uh, rent a bigger car, um, go to the supply store, Mm, buy it. Uh, usually if it's such a large scale, I will need to uh, order it in advance. So that's another step, order it in advance, um, bring it home, then uh, decide where am I going to paint it because it will probably not fit in my studio or if it fits, I will not have enough space to have, um, to, to be able to um, watch it from the distance. Uh, so I will need to paint outdoors um, and then again I have another idea that I cannot do it um, now because we are in the winter and sometimes it's raining sometimes the weather is not that nice uh, so I will need to postpone that project to um, somewhere where I have a better weather mm and so on and so on. And I write everything um, that comes up to my mind and I create these actionable steps. I see, I look at them and I see how much time it will take me and then I fit it into my planning. Uh, I will give you another example because as I, uh, as you can see, no clear on your voice. Oh my gosh, that's not good. That's not good. Um, that's not good. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see. I will try to bring it. You see, I made a mistake. I forgot to ask you if you can hear me well. Can you hear me better now? All right. Okay, so uh, guys, can you tell me if you can hear me well? <laughs> I got stressed because I'm talking now for 20 minutes and if you couldn't hear me, that's not good. Okay, you can hear me perfectly. That's great. Now you see my face <laughs> a little bit too close probably, but okay, I will follow. Um, another of my personal goals is... Um, mm, 
I don't know, do you want me to uh, show you another of my personal projects or do you want to see my business projects? Let me know. I think business project might be interesting because uh, that's what I'm also working a lot right now and I can give you ac exact actionable tasks that I'm um, executing. Is that okay? Let me know guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not saying anything so I'm deciding I will show you uh, my business. Um, goals and um, we will walk through one example so as a creative business owner uh, I uh, start again from the vision because I have a little bit different vision uh, for my business perspective uh, for my business purposes because sometimes business doesn't go along with my vision of my business doesn't go along uh, with my vision of me as an artist uh, and it's mostly because some of my artistic projects are basically not possible to be monetized and they just create costs, they cost me time and they don't bring any money. And as you know, the purpose of the business is to bring money. Um, so uh, here there, there is a little bit of a difference. And um, I start again with a vision. So how do I envision myself as a creative entrepreneur? And how do I envision my business, my creative business? Because this might be also a little bit different and then I try to find um, a common point. So again, I take a blank paper and I brainstorm. How, who do I want to be as an entrepreneur? And I um, already know that I want to be, uh, I want my a business to be based on certain values like again, um, um, first of all, I want this business to be based on a value that is very important for me and that is um, to run the business on my own terms, uh, which means that I'm not accepting um, uh, things that don't feel right to me, even though they will bring me money. Um, and I... Um, and it's, I have also one certain rule for my pricing, um, which means that I don't negotiate my prices. Uh, that's my rule, that's my value, that's the value of my art. Uh, and, um, and I try to live by those values because that's that what feels right to me. Uh, and, um, and I want my business to feel like exciting, my voice is breaking. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but it's probably because of the um, internet connection, perhaps mine or perhaps yours. Anyone else is having that trouble? You can always rewatch uh, what I'm talking about. It, um, I'm saving um, all those studio talks on uh, on my blog, so you can also go to the previous ones and watch them. Okay, no one else is complaining, so I'm continuing and I'm really sorry um, for that. Um, another thing that I want my uh, business to be run by is quality. Uh, quality is very, very important to me. Mm. And my audio is perfect since the beginning. Okay, no worries. Thanks. <laughs> uh, quality. Then um, also, if I haven't uh, collaborated with any brands anymore, but that's one of my visions that I want to collaborate with brands. Uh, but again, I have here one rule that uh, I only want to collaborate with brands uh, from which I buy products and I love them or I would love to buy products um, because some brands maybe are, um, I don't know, too expensive and I don't use them, but I would love to buy them if I could. Uh, so that type, of, that type of brand is also um, 
on my list and um, what else and like my overall vision for my business and for me as an entrepreneur is that I want to kind of um, build an abstract empire <laughs> Uh, which can sound, you know, I feel a little bit embarrassed when I say that, but the vision can be, um, you know, that big and even feeling a little bit embarrassing to to you. Uh, but when I wrote it, I always try to um, go deeper and see what does it exactly mean to me. So what does it mean that I create this abstract empire? Um, and for me, uh, that means... Um, something very very specific and if I wouldn't ask myself that question I would then probably go that deep and didn't realize that uh, so for me that means that I want to become kind of iconic artist for two cities that are important for me so for Krakow where I come from I want uh, people who come to Krakow uh, and are looking for art or for things that are specific for this city i want my name to come to come up there um and uh barcelona barcelona because i live here um it's my second um beloved city and that would be my vision okay bye bye <laughs> uh you can watch the replay always you're going to the tutation. See you later. Bye bye. Mm. And out of this vision, I um, defined, I, I brainstormed again, like what would be my perfect, um, uh, my perfect uh, goal. And of course, my goal um, is to uh, grow my business, uh, grow my art business and diversify my art business into different things. Because for me, empire means that it's not only creating um, abstract paintings, that's only part of my work. And it's actually goes um, a little bit into my personal uh, projects because I would really love to create my uh, abstract paintings uh, totally out of my um, uh, desire to create um, and um, not necessarily to um, to be able to sell everything of that so uh, growth of my business and now growth of my business has a couple of projects and one uh, project for me is growth of my personal brand then uh, financial growth uh, then I have uh, another part of my business, which is sharing my knowledge. And within uh, growth of my business, I also have personal projects, uh, which links to uh, my another goal of being an artist. So as you can see, this um, I'm trying to balance everything and trying to shape it so that um, those goals um, become complementary and not necessarily um, mm, totally different and separate ones. Um, and I, I identified that for me, uh, the most important goal for 2020 is to build my personal, not to build and to grow my personal brand. What time is it? Okay, it's, uh, I'm talking already 30 minutes. Uh, we still have 30 minutes. Um, so I will walk you through um, this most important goal for me, which is um, growth of my personal brand and how I uh, divide this goal because this is such a huge goal. And for, um, you know, it, it can feel overwhelming. Like, how do I do that? Where do I start? And, and so on and so on. Um, I will tell you how that looks like with me and what is my process. So again, I have um, this goal, uh, growth of my personal brand, and uh, I brainstorm like everything I that comes up to my mind that I need to do 
in order to grow it. So first of all, I need to see and understand where my brand stands right now. Um, so I need to do some kind of brand audit. Um, I can do it myself or I can hire someone. I decided that I will do it myself. So I, then I need to uh, do research how to do such an audit, uh, what exactly I need to take into uh, consideration um, and so on and so on. After uh, the audit of my brand, I need to see um, if I have actually a well-defined brand strategy. If not, I need to work on that and um, define um, more strategically uh, what is the strategy, strategically the strategy, what is the strategy of my brand. And um, then again, if I don't understand what does it mean, the strategy of the brand, I need to research again. What is, what is actually a brand strategy? What elements come into that? Um, do I have those elements defined? Do I still need to work on them and define them? And, and so on and so on. Uh, after brand strategy, if I have my brand strategy, then I need to have a communication strategy. Do I know what is a communication strategy? Do I have a clear communication strategy? How does it look with me? Is there anything I need to improve? Um, if yes, I need to work on that. Then if I have my communication strategy, um, do I execute on that uh, communication strategy? How do I execute? How do I want to execute on that? So this is everything that was coming up uh, from my brainstorming. And um, just to uh, clarify, uh, I already know a lot about branding and this is not the topic that is totally uh, new to me. So although I still needed to do some research, most of the things I'm talking about right now, I already have the knowledge about them because I read books, because I, um, I follow people that talk about it um, and I have pretty, um, uh, I have basics, let's say. I'm not the expert in, uh, in branding and I'm still learning and actually I'm right now at the phase of defining, uh, redefining my strategy and my uh, my brand strategy and my communication strategy. Um, but this is not the topic that is new for me. If you would be, if I would be someone that um, is just starting with branding, that would that would have like tons of more tasks, uh, most probably. So, um, with all that brainstorming, what I do is I take my calendar, okay? And in this calendar, I put um, the exact actions that I need to do. So um, from my brainstorming, uh, I came out that I need to do, uh, my first step would be, or I decided that my first step would be to do the audit of my brand to see where I am. And that's what I put in my calendar. Um, let me see where is that. It's just something exactly that I'm working on right now. Okay, so um, last Wednesday on 8th of uh, January, I put, um, it's in Polish, uh, but I put that I will do the audit of my brand and I just dedicated two hours to do that. Uh, so I knew that on that day I will have at least two hours so that I can sit and do that. Um, and I could put this uh, task because I already uh, knew what an audit of a brand is. I had materials to do that. I had all the steps I need to follow to perform that audit. Um, that's why I didn't need to do any research before. But if I didn't know what the audit of a, what an audit of a brand is, I would need previously to research that and to learn on that. Um, so that I can perform it. Uh, then after that brand audit, I have another task um, to uh, print out the elements of the brand strategy uh, that I researched previously. And this is the task that is uh, five minutes. I need to go to the internet where I found it already previously um, and print it. And that's my task. That is 
written in the calendar the next day because I know that I will just have that little spot of time uh, so that I can do that. Um, the next day I have that I need to do the first two steps um, or define the first two elements of this brand strategy and or see if it's well defined and so on and so on. So that's how I go um, a little step by step and I have all that uh, here written in my calendar and uh, I, as I explained, I try those tasks to be um, small enough so that I know that that day I can um, execute on them. And once I've done everything I have um, brainstorm, I brainstorm again to see uh, what else I need to do to achieve that goal. So remember, my goal is to uh, grow my brand. Um, so once I've finalized everything, uh, I'm like, okay, where am I now? How is my brand growing? Is it going into uh, the direction I want? Uh, does it feel the right way? Does it feel the way I want? Uh, it doesn't. Okay, what next I need to do? What are the next steps? And that's basically how I work uh, on my goals. This is only an example uh, for one project out of this big goal, which is um, business growth. Um, best of luck for your of your brand. Oh, thank you. You are so sweet. Mm. So, um, that said, I think I showed you um, what I wanted to show you. Now I want to ask you if uh, you have any questions, uh, if there is any part that was not clear on you, or if there is any part that you see would be difficult for you to implement and why you think so. Maybe we can brainstorm together and see uh, if we can um, find a solution. I'm here to help you, I'm here to, um, uh, to support you. We still have 20 minutes, so 20 minutes for your questions, 20 minutes for uh, your issues. If you have issues with your goals, um, any type of issues, um, you can also write down and we can find out together if we can, um, if we can find a solution. Anyone here that needs some support? If you have uh, any problems with um, um, defining what are those actionable steps for your goal, you can also um, let me know what is your goal and we can think together on what could be the actionable steps for you. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one. All right, guys, if um, if you don't want to share, okay, how many years you're working as abstract artist? Okay, so um, let me think. I started to paint abstract um, probably like mid, no, 2014, and in 2015, I started painting uh, abstract. Uh, before I was painting more figurative, um, I actually also went to an art school, a very traditional uh, figurative, um, uh, figurative drawing and painting. I just did the drawing part, I didn't do the painting part, um, because I quit before. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and after that art school, I realized that figurative um, doesn't fulfill my creative um, desires and I started painting abstract. And if I took any education in abstract arts or um, you're a self-taught artist. Um, if I'm self, I, um, I don't consider myself self-taught artist because I didn't learn 
like myself out of nothing but I also didn't um, take any education in abstract arts um, I learned abstract from observation fr observing other artists observing artists that I really love um, following my inner instincts um, learning a lot about con composition about color um, about mark making um, and all that stuff if I'm selling my abstract paintings and abstract products yes I sell online mostly on my website okay okay guys if you don't have any more questions um or if you do have more questions let me know and if not um i wish you a beautiful day and you can watch the first part of uh, planning uh, on my blog Okay, I have a question about achieving goals. Once you set them, imagine something happens and you have to change them. Yeah, that's totally normal. You can change them. They, these are your goals. Um, how do you manage? Like, um, 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 can you give me an example? Like what could happen? It, some, something happens that you cannot, you cannot uh, make this goal because you have less time or or you just don't want to uh you just don't want to uh continue with that goal um okay let me let me um sorry i couldn't listen your previous answer but As an example, my turn is to be more focused on health fitness. Okay. But I had a health issue, so I need to stop for a month. Okay, so that's um, that's totally fine. Now, um, you know, the goals is also something to prioritize and um, the goals need to be adapted to your circumstances that's super hyper important because otherwise uh, that's what happens you become frustrated you put pressure on you you become kind of um, unhappy uh, and so on so if your circumstances right now is that your health uh, you have an ha a health issue and because of that health issue you cannot um, execute on your uh, fitness goals um, mm, you should switch your focus your focus right now and your main goal for the next month should be to uh, take care of your health issue and that's the goal right now for this month um, once you solve this issue uh, and you um, uh, are better on your health you can come back to your fitness uh, goal and that's totally fine that's totally fine I constantly change and rearrange my goals depending on what's um, uh, what's the priority right now because you know I have my list of to do things um, I create sometimes I plan from one day to another um, because I have a little toddler and I never know exactly how my next day will look like. Uh, so, or I cannot plan a week in advance. I usually plan just a few days, um, few days in advance. Um, but still, it may happen that uh, my daughter is sick and she's the whole day with me and then I cannot do anything on my goals uh, for the whole day or for the whole week or even longer. So that's totally fine just to prioritize um, when the circumstances arises, arise. Is that um, um, a satisfying answer for you? I know it feels frustrating and I feel frustrated sometimes as well, 
but uh, again you just need to make a switch in your um, in your mind saying it's different uh, different priority for this month that changed and that's it you know I'm working as an abstract artist many years on uh, and of work now I'm working as art teacher with different disabled children but I want to work for myself and want to sell my abstract paintings okay I want to sell art products but how um, okay so your goal would be to um, be a working abstract artist uh, and to sell your abstract paintings uh, you need to brainstorm uh, maybe a little bit what is your vision of yourself as, as an abstract artist do you want to sell uh, art yourself do you want to be represented by a gallery do you want to have an um, art agent that would sell for you so there are a couple of uh, possible paths but each path is totally different um, and um, the best you should probably um, I, I you want to sell yourself uh, if you want to sell yourself um, then there are a couple of steps so first uh, you need to see where to sell um, I know that there are many artists that sell very um, um, very successfully on Etsy uh, so the step would be to set up a shop on Etsy you would need to um, have a little bit more even actionable tasks to do that to first research um, on Etsy like how to set up the shop it's pretty easy but still you need to um, find out how to do that you would need to have at least a couple of products uh, to um, publish there um, understand how to position your art so place a good tax, um, good description of the product, good title of the product, uh, understand what works and what doesn't work on that website. They have plenty of materials, but that would re require from you a lot of research uh, previously. So you would really need to first set time to research. Um, there are also many places, many, many other places where you can sell your work, uh, like Fine Art America. Um, you can sell your uh, products with your art on, for example, Society6 um, and so on and so on. All that, all that websites have their own kind of uh, ways for setting up the products and then for um, tagging them in the ways that people who look for them can find uh, actually your art. Uh, I also recommend for artists that want to become working artists, um, there is a, a course that I recently did by Lisa Kongdom uh, on creative life. It's called uh, Become Working Artist. She actually um, does uh, an amazing job there to show you different paths and uh, also how to um, how to achieve um, that goal um, and she talks about becoming an artist represented by artist self uh, represented artist um, and she talks about licensing as well a lot so I really recommend that course uh, I think it was in promotion I, I did it uh, actually at the end of uh, last year um, and there was a promotion it cost 15 euros I think or 15 dollars uh, the full price is about 50 or 45 but still I think it's a pretty affordable price for all the content that you receive and I truly truly recommend that and I had one more question before wait I'll have a look sorry I couldn't listen to your previous answer about abstract art because the only internet connection what was the question uh, you mean the education of abstract arts okay uh, I don't have any education on abstract art uh, but I also don't consider myself as a self-taught artist um, because um, I'm learning from other artists even though they don't teach me directly uh, I learn from them I observe what they do I take what I love from their art and I implement it in my art 
Um, and that's the way uh, of learning as well. Um, so it might be considered self-taught, but I, I, I don't consider it that way. So I hope that um, helps. Okay, I want to sell my paintings and handmade art products online as well, but how and how I find clients to buy these products. And actually, I want to start arts business, so how I start and where. Mm. I would start um, with uh, setting up your online shop. Uh, it can be either on Etsy, which is very easy. You don't need to do anything. You can also set up your own website and sell your products, but this is a little bit more complicated. Um, and I would start on uh, really trying to um, to show showing your work on Instagram. And that's a perfect uh, platform. It works uh, very well um showing your art uh, talking about your art in an authentic way and um building your um, personal brand because if you want to sell your work um yourself you really need to build that personal brand um that's that's super 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 important so um um that that's where where i would start basically well, I need to have a bit of water. We have seven minutes to um, finish. Mm, okay. Ra Rabia Mukud... Muk I'm sorry. Muk Mukadus. Ah, Rabia Mukadus, okay. Um, did I kind of answer your question? Do you want more details? Uh, let me also clarify one thing. Selling your own work and um, being a self-represented artist uh, requires many, many... Um, skills and it's not only painting skill like your art and um, the beauty and uniqueness and you know your art can be wonderful and the best um, in the world but uh, to be a self um, represented artist and selling online you need to also be good marketer and uh, be good at selling your work um, so in the previous video I was talking a lot about um the mistakes i was doing at the beginning of my art career when i tried to uh, become a working artist and one of the mistakes was that i didn't know myself and i didn't know um the way um i wanted to sell my work um and that's very important to identify. And I didn't know the way I want to communicate. I didn't, I was terrified about selling my work. You know, I was terrified about um, telling the price of my artwork. So those are all the um, elements that um, you need to also identify within yourself. First of all, to get to know yourself very, very well and to get to know your uh, get to know what you like what you love and what you want because for me for example um as i said i was terrified about selling i felt very uncomfortable about selling but that was some kind of belief in my mind and i knew on the other hand that i don't want to work with um galleries um and i want to sell work myself uh, but being terrified didn't go well with that. So I needed to actually um, go over that and work on that. That was hard work for me. Mm, but that was my case. Your case may be totally different, but you need to get to know your, yourself. I don't know why other artists not want anyone to follow them on Instagram. Okay, mm, I don't know. Um, 
I never heard about that that other artists don't want anyone uh, don't want other artists to follow on Instagram. Well, maybe because they just want to have clients there and they don't believe that other artists buy art, which is actually not true because I'm an artist and I buy art from other artists. So, uh, you know, the fact that I follow other artists, I um, I sometimes buy work from them. So, okay, four more minutes. Um, guys anyone has any questions if not i forgot to say because this is behind the scenes so i'm talking about what's going on in the studio and today there is a very important day and very important thing happening because i'm taking um orders for custom paintings uh, and if you actually are interested in uh, selling and um uh, and you want to watch how other artists sell you can observe me as well and um, have a look how I'm selling, how I'm offering uh, different things. Uh, what is the language I use? What is the communication I use? Um, that's, um, that's beneficial because it's not uh, random. It's something that I um, think about strategically. And, um, and of course, it's sometimes spontaneous and uh, uh, for sure it's authentic um but it uh stays somewhere within my strategy uh so that's a good um way to learn also and if you watch other artists uh, observe them as well especially if you um watch artists that are self-represented um and not um, the ones that are gallery represented I like to follow other artists' work, Instagram, but slowly, slowly, day by number of following are less, and even my followers are becoming less, not knowing why it's happening. Well, um, this is very normal because uh, many times people that follow you, um, well, not many times, but sometimes people that follow you, they just follow you so that you follow them back, and if you don't do that, they unfollow you. This is a very common rule uh, here on Instagram uh there are also yeah many people do that so um so that's why sometimes you see that you have less and less and that's happening with me as well uh, but most important thing you know don't focus that much on your following i mean growing your following is um good and it's important and so on but i would uh, focus first on really um trying to understand who's already following you um what they like about your art, like get to know the followers you have and uh, talk to them the way you want to talk. Uh, start offering them your art, start offering your, them your product, see what is their response and don't give up if you um, offer something and no one buys. This happens uh, a lot, it happens to me even now. Uh, in two minutes uh, we are <laughs> finishing because Instagram is uh, cutting um, the lives after one hour. Um, but really, uh, one of the mistakes I was doing, I was uh, really focused on growing my Instagram and that's, uh, I didn't see that beneficial because I was growing it, but then I didn't grow my sales. Um, and it's only when I started to actually um, talk to my followers uh, that are right now without uh, wanting to have more followers. Um, that's when I started to become more authentic and uh, like speaking with the voice I wanted to speak. Um, so that's what I um, always recommend. Don't focus on growing your um, your Instagram. Focus talking to your uh, people and then they will start sharing, they will start um, talking about you. That's what you want, okay? Okay guys, so um, I wish you a beautiful day and uh, talk to you next week uh, on the Studio Talks. Bye bye.